What's up, Barnhill family, and welcome back to your home for all things combat sports. Yo, yo. So it was total poetic justice last night. Nate Diaz ended up with a much better opponent for his last fight in the UFC, at least for now. It was a fun fight while it lasted against Tony Ferguson, and he submitted him off his back. What could be more Diaz than that? That was perfect. The only thing that makes it more Diaz is that it was at 209 on the timestamp of the right. third round. So he was doing it for his area code and everything. Did it for Stockton. Yeah. And, you know, everybody was c- kind of saying the same thing after we realized this fight was getting made is we couldn't believe these guys haven't already fought each other. I mean, they have so much basically chemistry or no synergy i should say they both been at 155 for the majority of their career but they bump up to 170 at times they both won the ultimate fighter they've both basically fought everybody for the past decade at 155 except for one another you know when they announced that i was expecting to see a number two on it right diaz ferguson too because i just assumed they had fought each other and the fight was slipping your mind or something (laughs) right right i'm just thinking like well who won was it was it by submission or what happened And then I realized they had never fought each other. So while obviously the card was going to be pretty interesting to see Chimaev go in there with Diaz and all that stuff, I honestly think the MMA gods were looking out for not only the fans, but the fighters, uh, Nate Diaz particularly, and everybody else. Because Nate Diaz got to fight a legend in his weight class against somebody that respects him, that he respects, and all that stuff in his last fight in the UFC for now. And I just think that was the perfect way to do it, especially watching the level of competition. You know, you watch Hamza Chemaev and Kevin Holland, and that was high-level martial arts, as far as I'm concerned. Kevin Holland didn't get his hand raised, but he definitely gave Hamza a lot to deal with in those two minutes that he was, you know, surviving. But if that Hamza Chemaev would have gone against that Nate Diaz, it would have been a bloodbath. No offense to Nate Diaz, but that yeah. would have not been a competitive match at all. Same thing goes for Tony Ferguson. Tony Ferguson is above and beyond where he used to be. And I don't think that we'll ever see the Tony Ferg of old again. But these fights are more fun than a lot of the high-level competitions that the UFC puts on. We love these guys, these old-school gangsters that come in there to fight. They start bleeding in the first minute, and then they just give us an epic show, even if that means they're going to be hanging out, walking, and putting their hand on the the side of the octagon to catch a breather mid-fight. We like that kind of stuff. And I just feel like, for some reason, even though everything sort of fell out of Dana's hands last minute, he was able to piece something together that was actually better than what he originally planned. Vince McMahon used to say that the only reason he wouldn't purchase the UFC is because you can't script the outcomes and determine the winners. But I would combat that by saying that sometimes what happens in reality is far better than what you could ever script or what you could ever sit in a boardroom and try to decide which direction to go. And this was a perfect example of one of those types of situations. I agree with you. Chimaev uh, versus Diaz would not have been competitive at all. It wouldn't have been a fun way to see Diaz go out. Tony Ferguson versus Nate. Those are two legends, two guys pushing 40. It was the right fight to make. And I think the UFC is really doing something interesting here when they're allowing it's almost like two divisions are running simultaneously you have the legends league and then you have the people that are actually seriously trying to contend for a belt and you've got people like you know up jose aldo up until his last fight he was trying to get a belt but now think of all the fun fights there are for jose aldo to be had at 135 you got frankie edgar in the mix you've got these guys that are legends of the sport that can compete in meaningful competitive matches without being basically handed over to slaughter against these new up-and-comers like Rachmanov and Chemaev and people like that that would probably just ragdoll them and it wouldn't be fun. So I think the UFC matchmakers sometimes don't get enough credit for the matches they put together or the matches they put together at the last minute when they have no choice, such as UFC 279. But it's very interesting. Nate Diaz, I was glad to see because we know he's had a very contentious relationship with the UFC. It's been a love-hate. He acknowledged that it was a love-hate, but he thanked Dana. He thanked the matchmakers and he said, this has been my home. Everything in the past is in the past. I have love and respect for this organization. I'm going to leave for a little while and go compete in other martial arts. And I like that he didn't just say boxing. He said jujitsu. He said kickboxing. You know, jujitsu's never been bigger than it is right now. Kickboxing is becoming very popular here in the United States. 
But I think the main thing that he's going to focus on is boxing. But it's going to be interesting. Does he turn his sights towards Jake Paul or does he go for the legends like a Floyd Mayweather or somebody like that? I could see him go in either direction with that. And even with the kickboxing, you know, Andrew Tate has come up and he's one of the most controversial people on the planet these days. Also one of the most talked about people. When Nate first said kickboxing, I'm thinking, who the heck is he going to fight in kickboxing that has any sort of name? Because, you know, truth be told, there's not a ton of major names or stars in kickboxing and then I go oh my god Andrew Tate right if you told me Andrew Tate and Nate Diaz are going to fight sometime next year I'm so in on that and I feel like because they're similar in age and both heavy with the striking that could probably end up happening I just feel like Nate Diaz basically left us with a good note I'm coming back to the UFC but for right now I've got some business to go tend to and I think what he's going to go do is rise up jujitsu as a whole because if Nate Diaz is competing against the best jujitsu players in the world they're viewership is going to go through the roof compared to where it's at right now and same thing goes with boxing these celebrity boxing matches you know he could go jump into that because he doesn't really have a lengthy professional boxing career or anything like that but he could also go in there and get the respect of the Floyd Mayweathers and the people like that that have always said for years and years if there's anybody that knows how to box in the UFC it's those Diaz boys so they've said it themselves years and years and years along the way that the Diaz boys could box well now they want to come box with you and I feel like they could draw a lot of fans over to boxing and people would definitely want to tune in to see that and then of course the one boxing match that you know Dana would have to be involved in but I think could end up happening is we see Nate versus Connor number three but in a boxing ring I mean those guys for all intents and purposes want to just go in there and punch each other right in the face so Forget all the jujitsu, forget the kicking and all that stuff. Let's see you guys box at about 170 pounds. And I feel like that's exactly what we might end up seeing in the next couple of years. Floyd Mayweather is a great option. Conor McGregor is a great option. Jake Paul, that might be a little bit tough for him to get because I think Nate Diaz is just going to try to prove that he doesn't want to play with, like, you know, Disney kids. He wants to go fight with Floyd Mayweather, the greatest of all time. But, you know, crazier things have happened than celebrities getting boxing matches with legit tough guys. Yeah, no doubt. And Nate seems to have a code. And as we've been fans of Nate over the last couple of decades, we kind of understand what his code is. And he wants to fight who he considers to be real OGs, real gangsters. Like even somebody like Hamza, he totally discounts them for a guy like Tony because Tony's been in the game for, you know, 10 plus years. He had a 12 fight win streak and his opinion could be brand from him. And so that's a gangster. I want to fight him. He's a gangster. You know, Jorge Masvidal had a great last fight. So I want to fight him. That's how he rolls. And so for him to go say, I want to take on Jake Paul would go against that sort of quote unquote gangster vibe that he puts forward. I, I see it more likely that he goes, I want Floyd because Floyd was 50 and oh, he was on his terms. He dominated all y'all fools for 10, you know, 20 years. And so Conor McGregor said, look, the trilogy will happen between me and Nate. Nate wants the Conor trilogy, but I don't think it necessarily has to be inside of a cage. I think it could be inside of a boxing ring for sure. Both guys love boxing. Both guys are kind of known for their hands inside of the UFC. Nate, more so hands and jiu-jitsu. Connor's known for that powerful left hand. So why not throw all the other tools and rules out and just let these guys punch each other in the face one last time? So I think that's more likely. But I do think Jake's going to be pining for this Nate Diaz fight because I, in my personal opinion, I think Jake's working behind the scenes right now to scrap the Anderson fight and make Nate Diaz his new opponent because – In my honest opinion, I don't believe Jake can beat Anderson, and I think somewhere deep down he knows that, and I think he thinks he can beat Nate. That's also a bigger fight. That's a mega pay-per-view type of event. It wouldn't surprise me if Jake's team right now is working on scrapping Anderson and putting Nate Diaz in his place. I could definitely see that happening. You know, Nate is so tough, but he is a lot smaller than Anderson Silva, and he's not quite the uh, athlete or the striker. And after last night... He's just not the old Nate Diaz that we remember. He's still as tough as nails. He still knows how to take a punch, and, and his head movements in, in, in boxing and defense is good, but it's no Anderson Silva level. So we'll, we're going to have to see what happens. I think Jake Paul is going to be trying to go for that fight, and if it means scrapping the Silva fight for now, then that might be better for business. But uh, 
a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush, right? And you've got Anderson Silva agreeing to fight you right now. Getting a win over him would absolutely cement you as a legit tough guy, and nobody would ever bat an eye or question your ability to be a real boxer or competitor in combat sports. No doubt about that. Guys, drop us a comment. Let us know what you thought about the fight and who Nate Diaz should fight next and what rule set it should be under. As always, we're your home for all things combat sports. If you haven't subscribed yet, we appreciate that. And a like on this video. Take care. Peace.